All right. So this video is going to be a brief video on how to make a little pad cup like this. So this is a uh, 24 ish millimeter uh, pad cup uh, and maybe a little smaller than that. And um, I'm going to show you the tooling and the technique I use. It's a spinning technique. This is a, uh, a pad cup with a slight bevel to the top. And uh, so the tools I made, and these are all turned out of some brass. There is the um, metal spinners, call these a chuck, I believe. It's basically a turned piece of brass that is the uh, inside diameter, the outside diameter of this is the inside diameter of the pad cup that I uh, needed to make. And so that's going in my lathe chuck. And although I have a, a fairly large lathe for a, uh, an instrument repair shop, you can actually do this on the little, uh, uh, the little, uh, seven by 14 or whatever they are in the little mini lays. Uh, this is a, uh, essentially a live center that I made. And all it is is a, if I can get it apart here, it's a, a steel, a piece of steel I turned and I counterboard it and there's two skateboard bearings in it. So it's pretty low tech. And then it has a brass um, end to it that I also turn, if I can get it apart here. Yeah, I gotta tap it apart. So, um, anyway, so this is gonna hold the brass onto the chuck. So this goes in my tail stock. Okay, and then <clears throat> I have a piece of brass that I uh, cut into a, roughly a circle. Uh, it's about the size that I need to make this turning. And what I'm going to do is roughly center it up and I'm going to uh, turn it so it's circular, although it doesn't really have to be totally circular when you do this. But um, so I'm going to put it in here and my um, spinning in a metal lathe like this creates a lot of force. So you want to make sure things are good and tight. So I'm just holding that into position and checking this to see that looks pretty good so now because um, these are beveled what I'm gonna do is I'm going to run the tailstock up against this good and tight and it'll actually press that into that bevel shape so good and tight and make sure that's in there okay everything's tight. Now I'm going to take and turn this uh, so it's round. And if, it, if the brass slips when you do this, all you got to do is just tighten it up a little bit more. And I'm just going to take off enough till it's round. I'm trying to take the burr off as well. Okay. So that's eh, not bad. I got a little little flat spot on it there. Well, but that's okay. So I'm going to take and put some oil on this. And take this tool out. And this is my cutting tool. And I'm going to put this tool in. This is my burnisher. All this is is a piece of steel that I turned into a ball. I've actually got two different sizes. This one's ground with a little flat on so I can get up to an edge a little bit easier. Uh, for some spinning uh, turnings I was going to do, but um, I've made these. This is just a piece of um, cold rolled steel that I've uh, uh, turned into a ball and polished. And then um, you can do this by taking a steel ball bearing and silver soldering it to a rod and making the same kind of thing. So uh, pretty simple, low tech. 
and get this in here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is try to push the metal against the mandrel uh, as I'm spinning. And uh, so we'll see how it goes. And so when you do this, sometimes you have to you have to take it off and re-anneal it. And um, the metal I made the blank out of was about thirty thousandths of an inch thick. I have a I have a rolling mill that's commonly used in jewelry making. There you go. And hopefully you can see that. <clears throat> that's uh, turned to uh, the inside diamond. And then I'm just going to go back with my cutoff tool here. And trim it up to the size that I want it. This uh, pad cup size was for a, a soprano sax I was working on. <laughs> be kind of stuck onto the the mandrel now so another good thing to do if you're you're uh, you can uh, while it's still stuck onto the mandrel you can get up give it a little polish with some memory cloth to take out any of the any of the marks in it. And then typically you probably there it goes. Have to pry it off of there. And uh, there's a pad cup for a uh, little saxophone pad cup. So there it is. <laughs> 